Okay. Right. Tweedledee and oh. Tweedledum have worked out the technical issues. <laughs> yeah, I've only got an inch of wine left. I've had to send my little wine fairy down to the shops. Um, yeah, we've worked out the technical issues. Yeah, that's not easy. I don't think it's either of our strong points, is it really? Uh, I hate it. They, they just annoy me. Computers just annoy me. They don't yeah, make any and the thing is, they me. know when you're annoyed, don't they? So when you're annoyed, they know and they play they up. Play up. Yeah. Well, when you're short of time, that's it. They, they, always, they always miss about when you're short of time. Yeah, energetically, we chuck them off. So before we start, you just had a very special new little friend. Is he still there? Yeah, he's right here. Hey, on, Bob. I've just given him a little treat. What's his name, Bob? Bob. Well, he's actual. His his name was. It was a Spanish name beginning with B. Uh, something like. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. A really well, long Spanish name. Yeah. Uh, but it began with B. Yeah. So I said, oh, I've got to give him an easy name. Let's just call him Bob. Yeah. And uh, he's, look, here he is. Come Bobby. On, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Come on, Pete. And don't Bob. let him jump on. Oh, I'm going to let him Bob. just so he, he's just so so he can be on there. He's dead handsome, isn't he? He's so handsome. Not... Can you see, Bob? Don't show Bob. Coco, can you see her lying by my salt lamp and my aloe vera plants? She's black and white as well, Bob. My dogs are out in the garden. Look how sunny it is. We've actually got sun in the UK today. Ah, that's good. It's, just it's been gorgeous here all week, actually. Do you know what has been brilliant? The best part about having, having well, there's so many great parts about having a new friend, is um, we've got a river just sort of just down the bottom of the hill. And um, if you're swimming in the river on your own, I don't know whether you're the same, but I always think, we don't like it on me. Yes. Someone else doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. Anyway, Bob loves swimming. So uh, we go down to the river. We've been uh, every day this week. We've been in. I chuck a stick. He jumps in. I dive in with him. And we have a race to the stick. I normally get there first. I throw it again. And we're having such a brilliant time. And honestly, it's like I've got, well, I've got a new best friend. And he really is one of those dogs I can tell he's yeah. going to be my best friend. For ages, I didn't get another dog because I used to breed Hungarian Bizzlers. And then when I had Amber, my old dog, put down about three or four years ago, I was so upset. I thought, I'm not going to have another one now. I'm going to wait until I'm ready. And he just, I know it was the, the planets aligned and he it was meant to be. And he's just the best dog ever. So I'm dead chuffed with him. He's, he's nine so months gorgeous. old. And the lady, he really is gorgeous. And the and lady he settled who, in <laughs> really quickly, hasn't he? Because was he with he was with other dogs before, so he settled in to be a one dog foam really easy. Yeah. Well, that's the reason she got ribbon because she had another dog, an older one, and she got him for company, but they didn't like each other. Right. And um, there was a lot of, I don't know. <laughs> and she brought him from England. I don't know. She must have paid a lot of money for him because he's a really good breeding dog, um, got from a really good line. Um, but it was a beautiful house up in the mountains. And I knew straight away, it was the vet, my vet who told me about him. So uh, I went straight away and I said, yeah, definitely, I'd, I'd love him. And she hadn't done any training with him at all. But uh, I can tell he's really, really clever because he's, he's learnt so much, even in one week. Oh, yeah, it'll yeah. be a week tomorrow. And he's learnt loads. So uh, he's, he's great. I love him to bit. And my, we're get, we've, um... got a, we've got a kitten coming as well. My friend Jorge, who lives up the road, says his cat had kittens a few weeks ago. He says, we've kept one back for you because we know you'll have it. I says, I better just ask first. Anyway, of course, of course we're having it. So a couple more weeks, I'll have a kitten on the scene. Oh, do you know, I've got, I've got, I've only got five cats at the moment. So. <laughs> oh, is that all? <laughs> That's all. But my two dogs, they're out in the garden at the moment. Um, Lola's quite like, I've got two Romanian rescues and they're about three and a half years old now, and they were so traumatised when I got them. But one of them, they're both absolutely beautiful. And um, they've, probably, they've got loads, goodness knows what they've got in them. But one of them is a real working dog. She's by my side the whole time, and she's so intelligent. She can be a little bit nervy around some other dogs if they invade her space. Some she's great with, some she's not, because she's had such a bad start in life. But they're yep. just amazing. And my daughter and I, we took them off to Gloucestershire and we went off um, walking last week with them. And it was the first proper holiday they'd had because they're quite nervy going new places. They love it where we do and going for walks. But if you're taking them into a new house or something, they're quite nervy. And we had such fun and we found wild boar and everything. Wow. Amazing. And they were, we did find some sheep. 
um, we went through fields of sheep and lambs and they haven't seen sheep because we don't have sheep around here. We've got lots of deer, um, yeah. but not sheep since the last foot and mouth, unfortunately. And she was very good initially, but I'd, I, you know, I would have to train her with them. She's fine with that. I've trained her really well with deer now, but she is so intelligent again. She's definitely a working dog. Mm. You know, I always think with animals, it's what you put into them, isn't it? Oh, yeah, because completely. How many people get a dog and it basically is a glorified ornament and it's they don't really want a dog. They like the idea of having a dog, yeah. but they don't put the effort in. Well, I've always thought with, with the same with dogs, horses, any animal, if you put the effort in, the time in, and you, it's not just there as an extra ornament, it's actually a big part of your life. Yeah. Then you bring out the best in the animal. And that's the same with all of them, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, it's so lovely because to see the way that ours have come on. I and mean, when we've got, we had the most gorgeous um, rescue lab. I don't know if you can see my picture in the background here. Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With um, Pumpkin. We've still got Pumpkin the cat. And he was a rescue lab from Ireland. He was just amazing. And then when he hmm. died, we thought well, we want to get some more rescue ones. And so, and I'm not the type that can ever go and see an animal and say yes or no. So I just sort of say, leave it open to the universe and say, I'll have what comes to me. But we've yeah. still got um, the other lab we have with him and she's 15 and a half now. And she's absolutely oh. adorable. Um, I really, you know, I really love labs, but I love mixed breeds as well. And, and the mm, ones, they're the fittest dogs I've ever seen. I mean, to see them move, it's actually quite beautiful. And they stand up mm -hmm. on their back legs and they point like a pointer and they can jump over anything and they float when they move. It's oh. fascinating. I keep trying to guess all the different breeds that are in them. <laughs> yeah, but they don't like water. So dogs, cats, horses, it's just been fantastic. We've had crap weather here and today has just been beautiful and it's just changed everything. But I know when we spoke earlier in the week with Charlie, we were talking about lots of big energy shifts and the moon was amazing. And Wasn't it, it amazing? And it was amazing again last night. Did you see yeah. it last night? And definitely one of my cats has been definitely feeling things as well. And he's incredible. He's another Romanian. He is absolutely, he's magical. He's just literally like magic. He's in <laughs> some of my videos. He comes on dog walks with me. Um, he's the type of cat that, you know, my husband loves him because my husband doesn't worry about anything. He's got, you know, he just is completely laid back. He's horizontal. And I've got those mummy genes. And so they're my babies and I want to keep them yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Idris, my cat, goes absolutely miles and miles and miles and her follow us on dog walks and then her be right up at the top horses field, which is miles away. And we see him in all the places we shouldn't. And it's really funny, the difference between men and women, because I'll be like, oh, God, I hope he's going to get back OK. You know, he's got a couple of lanes to cross. And my husband's like, he's fine. He knows what he's doing. You know but what, though? What you just said there is really relevant, because did you see I posted a thing to say, well done to all the women who were standing up and speaking out. Yeah. And what the hell are the fellas doing? Basically nothing. Um, and, and I think it's what you just said. Women are very nurturing and maternal and they've got that instinct. They've got an instinct for danger, basically. Yeah. My mum was terrible. Oh, you can't be careful. Oh, you're going to hurt yourself. Oh. <laughs> and I was always completely fearless. Yeah. But she was right because she loved me and she's got that protective instinct. And that's what's come out, I reckon, in the last couple of weeks and months, um, because women are going, hang on a minute, then looking at our children now to bloody yeah. get this vaccine. And they've, the hackles have written, they don't mind the oldies, they don't mind themselves, but touch the kids, and that's it. And well, I don't uh, you think can they really do mind see the it, oldies. can't you? Say again. I, I think they mind the oldies as well. I think, I yeah. think women have, the, all the ones I know, are really, really protective. The people of our age, they think you're big enough and ugly enough to look after themselves. Correct. Yeah, but yeah. I completely agree because even my friends, there's a lot of the people who have been really, really active and even the women that haven't got their own children, yeah, they're still absolutely like, no, they are not going to do this to the children. They're not going to do this to the old people. And yeah. they would literally fight to the death for it because that instinct, it doesn't matter... To me, it makes, I don't differentiate between my two-legged and four-legged children at all. Well, I probably do. Yeah, great. 
four leg of ones get fed first. Um, mm. But, um, you know, it is, it, I think it is, it's that protective instinct where, you know, you can feel in your gut that something's really off and you're not yeah. going to sit back and watch that happen. I agree completely. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? And, you know, so many things are happening now. I've had another, and I won't even mention his blooming name, but you know what I mean? I I've know exactly same, what you mean. I saw the You know what I mean? Unbelievable. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To, I, I hate swearing, but what a knobhead. Um, oh, completely. And, and uh, I still I, I still keep him there just because I'm waiting for the penny to drop. So one day he goes, oh, because he's going to. I mean, if he doesn't, he has been de won't in denial. Won't admit it, though, Jonathan. He won't admit No, he won't admit it. Yeah. But, I mean, look what's going on around uh, the world at the moment. Did you see? Well, of course you did. Last night, uh, Dominic Cummings. Yes. Dropping them all in the shit. And I was sat there watching the news. We get it at 11 o'clock because we're an hour ahead here. So it was the news at 11. And I sat there watching it thinking, oh, my God, this is really major stuff. Because whether you agree with the likes of you and I and Charlie and all the other people or not, what he is saying is so damaging because he's talking about, first of all, what absolute shambles it is, what a complete and yeah. utter shambles they all are, how they've lied constantly. And now they're trying to feather their own nest. Yeah. And I really hope that Matt. Yeah. Gets, I hope he gets his comeuppance, don't you? I so hope. I mean, I was watching snippets. It's been one of the last couple of weeks. It's been nightmare. I found it. I'm really, really lucky that I get people that send me stuff because I can't keep up with it because I'm doing so many different jobs and everything. But I watched some of it and there are certain things I loved and I've seen him criticised. So first of all, he's sitting there. Look, I've got my my sunlight streaming in he's sitting there relaxed as anything with his open net white shirt looking completely in control of the situation and i know he's a pr person but seriously you it's very difficult to look that in control of the situation when you're lying i know a couple of Absolutely. psychologists have come out and said well you know he's trained for this but you, you know, he got more and more relaxed because he doesn't need to lie. And and it was absolutely brilliant. And I'm really convinced that this is the start. I, I am as well. People opening up because you need some brave people to absolutely call out the bullshit. Because throughout yeah. all of this, for me, it's been just like the Emperor's New Clothes. Absolutely. I've said that so many times. Exactly yeah. the same. And it's exactly. just fascinating to see. And no one wants to be that one that says, hang on a minute, this is a complete load of shit. You yeah, know, exactly. I can't stop yeah, yeah. swearing today. So I, I need to have a little swear job. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you you probably know this. Uh, of course you do. I mean, we were all, we're a similar age. Uh, it used to be, there was a, uh, a record and it used to go, the king is in the all together. Do you remember yeah, that? That's right. Whenever they're all on the TV, oi, give up. I know you want another nut, don't you? Now we're on telly here, so it'll be good. Um, well, actually, it's not telly, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, uh, whenever I listen to all these idiots all going along with it, like a load of blooming brainwashed plonkers, I always go, the king is in the... Because yeah. that's what it is. It is exactly the same. And it takes somebody to be honest as a kid to go, yeah. you're naked, for God's sake. And, and the kids do to... call it out. You see, the thing is, they do. The trouble is, this is why I've got myself into trouble on my line. I had a reading by someone that does sort of astrological charts and things. And one of the things that came out about me, which has got me into so much trouble throughout my whole life, is I'm always the one that says the things that no one else wants to say. I'm and the it same. gets me into so much trouble. But the thing is, I don't say it to be awkward. Yeah, yeah, I say yeah. it because I've just got that, I can't bear bullshit and I can't yeah, I bear deceit. And I'm like, why why beat about the bush and take half an hour to say something that you could just come out and say in one sentence? I know, absolutely. And that's why, you know, people, I mean, um, we're all, obviously we're all finding our tribe. I hate that because it's, yeah. it's become a thing to say, but it's so true. And all the people who are truth tellers and uh, we've, we've got to know in the last 12 months who just say it like it is without all the frilly nonsense. It is so great. My grandma was one of those people. Yeah. Okay? In fact, one of the things she died uh, four years ago, my grandma, and she was 94. She, you'd have loved her. Everybody loved her because she had, she used to cut pits right through all the nonsense. 
and she would get straight to the point. And one of her favorite little things was to look at you. She had this expression on her face. I, I remember she did it to me loads of times when I was telling her a story and, you know, gilding the lily and all that sort of stuff. And she looked at you and she just went, bullshit. <laughs> you felt about that big. Yeah. But when you get to, when you get to 94, you've lived in lot long enough, haven't you, to know like Charlie said the other day, you can smell it a mile off. And my grandma was one of them and she wasn't afraid to say it. And I love that about people. I've got no time for all this frilly nonsense that people come out with. And it's meaningless waffle. That's all it is. Completely. And the thing is, there's there's so much amazing stuff to talk about. Yeah. You don't want to waste time on the trivials. And, and um, my mum's the same. My mum is absolutely hysterical. And for years, when I was growing up, we'd all, for me, our sisters and I would find it really embarrassing because she just comes out and says it. And we'd be like, no, shh, you can't say that. You can't say it. And now I think it's hysterical. So when the pubs opened up, um, we were so excited. We booked to, um, um, my hubby and I took, booked to take her out to the pub because she's been stuck in. She was widowed last year. She's just had the most awful time stuck in on her own through a rubbish winter and everything. So we thought, pub's open, let's go out for a nice lunch. So we go out to this pub and it was such a great pub because we walked out there, it was hysterical because we're all in this tent outside, but they'd done the tent beautifully, but it was absolutely freezing, but we were all gonna go anyway because we wanted our glass of wine and our meal. And then we walked in and none of the waitresses were wearing masks and we were like, this is amazing. You know, we all walked in without masks. And then we're all sitting there and it's quite close quarters, even though you're, so, you know, the tables are social distance. And then this guy that walks in, he was this great big fat guy and he had a mask on and she, we could see him walking from his car on his own up the gate with his mask on. So he got out of the car on his own with his mask on. He might have just put it on, who knows. But anyway, so it's all really, you know, everyone's having a nice quiet natter. My mum says, look at the, uh, um, at the top of voice, Look at that ridiculous idiot walking in the fresh air with his mask on, and it's always the fat ones. <laughs> Good for her. Oh, Did she really say yeah. that? And normally, I would be absolutely mortified. Of course, you don't want to be mean to people, but it was so funny. And the thing is, it was so true. And yeah. everyone, but when you get to a certain age, you yeah, get you away don't give with a shit it. anymore. You yeah, do yeah. get away with it because people don't say anything, do they? You know what, I think that there should be more old people on the telly uh, talking about this because they've lived, like you say, long enough and they don't care anymore. And they yeah. just say it. They're not bothered about what people think, how they look. They just come straight out there. And it's, it's you actually, the weird thing is they go back to being like a kid because, yes. you know, when you're a child, you don't really, before you've become aware. And I think all that awareness of what you can and can't say is a learned thing, isn't yeah. it? Because when you're a child, you don't know any better. So you just say it and you're honest. And then you go through that phase where you grow up and you, oh, you can't say this and you're very self-conscious and stuff. And then you go back to being like when you were a kid yeah. again, which actually I can't wait for that. <laughs> How am I start now? That's why it was so wonderful to see Dominic Cummings. And regardless, I mean, I didn't hear the whole thing by any stretch, but I heard enough to really think hallelujah. And then just before we came on today, because what I before I speak to people, I always have a quick look at MSM, a good a quick look at the BBC to see what the news is. And I saw the funniest interview ever with whether it's the real Boris or not, with Boris giving an interview with his blue mask on. You couldn't hear a bloody word he was saying. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, bumbling his way out of it again and everything. And I just thought, yeah, you absolute twat. You know, yeah. honestly. But what about what about this? As, as you're as you're dropping a few swear bombs, how about this? Yesterday, first time ever on the news, it said, "Oh, in this report, there is a little bit of uh, language that some people, some viewers might might find offensive." And I thought, "Oh, what are they going to say? They might say shit, or they might yeah. say, you know." And Dominic Cummings came straight out on the BBC News and said, "We're all fucked." <laughs> and I thought, "Did you see that?" No, I he didn't said, see it. Yeah, they sat round a table, Boris Johnson, Dominic Cummings, and the rest of the cabinet, and they and they actually used those words. They didn't beep it and put it. They actually said, yeah. "We're all fucked," and it was on BBC News. And I kind of went, "What? Bloody hell!" I, know. I never thought I'd see the day. But, but that's don't what you, you said. think that's got to be really significant? So we were all talking. Sort of everyone's been talking this week about 
have the mainstream media start to, to be infiltrated and and by the I good think guys it's because there's no way they would have shown that. And then you've got the stupid royal family, you know, yeah. turning against the BBC and all that sort of thing. And and for me, all these signs, I mean, I couldn't, I honestly, I think I've got Tourette's tonight and nearly said another swear word. But I don't care at all about, you know, any of the stupid news about what Kate Middleton's wearing or the royal family. But what I yeah. find brilliant is the fact now we're starting to see a different agenda coming out. And that's got to be a good sign in terms of uh, the mainstream media are starting to change yeah. the tune a bit. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, this this it, it, what's weird about it for me, and obviously you're like I am, you're standing back and you're looking at the big picture. You can see how little bits of truth and little bits of change, even small, are happening, not just in the BBC, but, I do, but everywhere across the board. You know, because you've got, obviously, Biden now. I don't know if you saw today. Biden is now saying that they're going to um, look into the um, Wuhan labs, um, how the virus got out. And he's now set up. So as far as I thought a few weeks ago, they discounted it, that it, that it had come from the Wuhan lab. And, and they just said it never did. That was the end of it. But now Biden is looking for an official inquiry. He's given 90 days for them to come back with a report about whether it came from Wuhan. But we know it bloody came from we Wuhan. We know it came from Wuhan. And we know that Anthony Fauci, um, you know, funded it. Again. Funded the whole thing. Well, it's, and well, also Fauci's said, getting, getting oh, shit. It's so shit brilliant. Left. I love it. Isn't it's it brilliant? Bigger. It's just Fauci's the best. Getting shit left, right and centre. I've hated this expression the whole way through. We're just watching a movie because I am very, very well aware yeah. of how many people have had a really terrible time of it. Me too. But these last few weeks, it's just like, I don't even watch movies. I do, I'm so behind. I never watch hardly any movies because um, I just don't watch telly. But yeah. this is just the best one ever. Now we're starting to see the exposure. And have you seen the Tucker Carson over the last few weeks? I love Tucker. What, what, which one? Which one oh, have you seen? Oh, he's just done bomb after bomb after bomb. He did the most brilliant one with Candy Owens, which was fantastic. Brilliant. Love and Candy I love Sowens. her. Absolutely love her. And then he did a really, really good one about, you know, Fauci and all the funding and everything and about how ridiculous, as if anyone still believes it came from a bat. Yeah. In the wet market. Yeah. And the fact that they'd all known that, um, you know, that the first two cases were back in November, December, and they were people that worked at the Wuhan lab. But the only thing I'm finding, re well, not the only thing, one of the things I'm finding really frustrating, I don't know about you, is it's almost at the stage now. So we're getting complete radio silence about all the floods in China and everything and what's happening with the dam and everything. And it's almost really, really hard at the moment to get any information. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. Well, uh, well, I mean, to go back to what you were talking about with this movie, I hated that. I hated that, I found it so annoying when people were saying, oh, grab your popcorn. Yeah. I thought, oh, hang on a minute, grab your bloody popcorn. Don't like popcorn. <laughs> well, no, me neither. But you know, people are dying, people are terrified. My mum's stuck in her house. I can't go home, I can't see me children. I can't do this, can't do that. And it's not a movie, this is real life. But actually, it's what I said to Charlie the other day, now I can really see how it's being played out. Yeah. And when you look at the key figures and the key um, players in this, like Trump, Trump looks totally and utterly in control. Yeah. And he looks totally relaxed. And he said the other day that because he's going to go out, isn't he, in the coming weeks and start mm. doing these rallies, he was getting... Uh, Air Force Trump ready, I think is the expression he used. So there's so many little things that keep yeah. being dropped into your, my sort of conscience going, well, hang on a minute. And it makes you realise that it's all been planned. And it all, yeah. to me, looks like it's a script and it is playing out like a pantomime. And I don't want to say that because it's really serious, but but that's exactly what it looks like. And I can't deny it now. I mean, mm. there's so many things. That I just think if people still believe the official narrative they, they would have to be completely mad but when this all comes out Catherine do you imagine in a couple of years time when this is, has all played out this will make the most amazing film ever just be phenomenal I mean it really will it would be brilliant and I'll be 
literally chaining all those people to the seats that have been rude to us throughout it all and make them bloody well sit down and watch it. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today is I still, I don't know what you think, but I still think we've got quite a long way to go here. And I think there's going to be some bumpy rides along the way in terms Me too. of Me too. food shortages, energy shortages, because I still think as a collective race of humans, we've got quite a lot of um, internal changes to make. So what sort of quite a few of my um, friends, the few I've got left, <laughs> um, are doing now, are really getting together on the practical side of the things and looking at generators, looking at water boreholes, looking at, like you, you know, for me, yeah. it's not just the humans, but I've got an awful lot of animals to feed. Yeah, exactly. And you can't stock up on a lot of that food in advance. Um, or if you can, it's really shit stuff, but you might need to feed them shit stuff to keep them going. But um, it is quite interesting about, I think, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to the actual getting really, really stuck into the doing phase now, you know, before yeah, yeah. it comes to, seriously, because if we don't need it, fine, it's a great exercise to do. But I think the building the community, yeah. looking at the resources you've got around you and pooling resources is going to be mm -hmm. really important moving forward. I, I, I agree. And fortunately, thank goodness, thank, whoever's looking after us, thank goodness, Fortunately, we have surrounded ourselves here with uh, like-minded people. And uh, I can think of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people who are on exactly the same page as us. They're growing their fruit and the vegetables. We've got 53 different species of fruit and vegetables here. They've got not quite as many as well, but they've got loads. Oh, by the way, got to tell you this. Today, we woke up, went down to see the chickens. We got four eggs. Our first four eggs. So well, exciting, it's, isn't it? Oh, dead eggs. It's like, like treasure. Anyway, so we've got our, within our eggs now and we've got fruit, we've got vegetables. And we've said with all our friends, which is not a massive group, but let's say, you know, a dozen people, that we will swap and share. Exactly. And what we haven't got, we'll give to you. And what you have, you know, you've got lots of, and we can swap and share. So if, and I'm hoping it won't happen, but if we get to the point where there's a shortages of food, and we can't go to the shops and everything else. Well, if it happened now, we'd still be okay. But we're, we're going to stock up because it's the winter, which is going to be the tough exactly. time. So that's what we're doing. And we're preparing ourselves. We're getting lots of stuff in the freezer. Um, the, fortunately, I got to know locally the, the every week they go hunting the, the wild boar. Loads of wild boar here. I mean, you wouldn't believe it, actually. Me and Bob saw one. Be really of careful with feeding wild boar to Bob, though, because there's a certain disease that wild boar get that can kill dogs, and it's quite common well, in them. Right. Well, what, what what I've been told to do, because th this friend of mine who's, who goes every week, it's out of season now, but literally mm -hmm. every week from, I think, September it starts, they go out and they catch, they shoot them. There's loads of them, and they're big as well. So what you do when you get them, you, you put the uh, meat in uh, water with vinegar mm. for two days and then you freeze the meat for two days and then it's fine. And that okay. kills anything in the meat that, that could harm humans, but also animals. Yeah, uh, and, one particular um, thing, I'll ask my vet friend, but I'm sure that will kill it. But it's, it's peculiar to boar and dogs. Okay. And, uh, about about eighty percent of the wild boar have them, but anyway, just because I'm more worried. Oh, I'll, look in, about... I'll look into that. I'm glad you told I'll, me. I'll I didn't find know it that. for you. Obviously, I'm more concerned about Bob than you. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, I but, would um, be. But yeah, it was just interesting. But no, that's one of my things. So I've got some really good friends who've got a borehole that's been drilled, and then they've got a generator as well, because that's always quite a big thing where we are, because we do get quite a lot of power cuts anyway yeah uh, but it's it's i'm at that stage now where, where are you Kat? where are you Catherine? where is your place we're just outside guildford in surrey but we're right up in the woods and so um yeah. we, when is where in surrey black keith Shandreen. oh yeah i know and we get quite a lot of power cuts anyway. I mean, a few years ago, we had one for three weeks all over Christmas and no power. And there's no gas here anyway. We don't have gas or main drainage or anything. Um, so, yeah. you know, it's just getting the practical sides. And so we've, we've been having some good fun meetings, just getting together with people and just sort of saying, right, what resources can we? But the thing I haven't sorted out yet is all the dog and cat food, I must say. I've got to sort that out. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. I do think people in all seriousness do need to sort of um, start preparing a little bit more in case supply chains do get a bit dodgy and prices shoot up and particularly power because we've seen what happened in Texas and that has to be an early warning for people. Well, you know, um, the, the worst that can happen, okay, and I've said this about all the things uh, about being outspoken, the worst that can happen if we get ourselves all stocked up and prepared and everything else is people are going to go, what a bloody idiot. Yeah. Okay. Well, people call me an idiot anyway. So I honestly, I don't care. Um, I'd rather be prepared and overreactive uh, just in case. And if it turns out that we were right, we won't be the idiots, will we? Yeah, and I think that's it. And anyway, all of these things are really useful to do anyway. I mean, it's it's good practice to be less dependent because I think just by doing this sort of thing, it makes you less dependent on the big corporate conglomerates. I know, and I looking know, absolutely. to support the more local businesses yeah. and people and everything anyway. And I think that's yeah. really lovely. I, I, I absolutely agree. The good thing about here is a lot of the produce is local. Yeah, it's a real, you know, a lot of the people here, they're a self-sufficient type of area. And we should definitely go back to that. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Because these big corporate supermarkets, and everyone's, they've had it really all their own way for such a long time. And they've made the rest of us basically slaves to their demand, to, to, to what they want to do. And it's the same in, you know, look at the, the, the butcher all of the, the basics, you know, the, the, um, the butchers, the, the fishmongers, the, the bakers, they can't compete anymore. And actually, because they've put the squash, the, the prices right down and people, obviously they, they sort of, um, they support whatever's gonna be the cheapest, but it all ties in to the way we've been controlled through money. Exactly. Because if the, doesn't it? That's what it all boils down. So you can see how there's a conspiracy there. You can see how they've been purposely targeted it's the same as Amazon, you know, last year, because people couldn't go out and buy presents or whatever for people at Christmas, everybody went crazy on Amazon because it was our only choice. So Amazon shot through the roof, made an absolute fortune. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. They've, they've profited from our misery and they've been doing it for years and years and years when there's lovely people who work their socks off around here that we should be supporting because the local people and you know them in the community and that's where we need to get back to. And also you can trust them because you know how they've grown the food, you know whether they've used chemicals, you know, and there's nothing like that, that I was speaking to someone the other day about, you know, the energy behind everything. And when something, when someone's really passionate about their craft, whatever it is, that comes through. Yeah. It's that exchange of energy that comes through all the way. So I do think, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. I think it's probably easier for you and I, because we do live in very rural areas anyway. And so yeah. people who live in our sort of areas, you're much more used to, I mean, where everyone who lives around here is used to having a lot of power cuts. So it oh, really, why, it, why do you have so many power cuts there? We've got so many trees and there's not many houses here. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. When the electric cables come down, we're always last on the line. Um, to actually get back up and running and everything. I mean, touch wood, it's been pretty good the last few years, but we went through about five years in a row. And do you know what was really funny <laughs> is when when we had once over winter and it was snowing, this was probably, it was quite a few years ago, probably about eight years ago, and we had no power for the whole, so everything in the freezer went, you know, there's no gas anyway. Um, we had no electricity, so we were just all sleeping in front of the, the stove. But my, where I'm in here now, my lovely little office in the garden and the wood burning stove in the background, it's so well insulated in here, it's really warm. But I gave this room to the guinea pigs because <laughs> so, they couldn't have their heat lamp on. And so they had this office and they were quite happy. Um, but yeah, I think we're quite used to it. Well, obviously, I suppose if you're living in the middle of a city, it's going to be much more difficult for people. <laughs> But yeah. they can still get together in their local communities and see who can get what. Good idea. Hey, you just reminded me of something. I was going to tell you this. And it's not quite what we were just talking about. Did I tell you, did you see on my little video, we found a gorgeous little old mill on our land that we didn't know that we owned. Oh, did wow. I no, that? I haven't seen that. Oh, it's, uh, well, I didn't. Uh, anything about it. We went for a walk through the woods because of the dog. And there's this gorgeous little old mill with a stream that 
And it's like, you could move in, you could live in there, no problem wow. now. But anyway, I'm going to do it up. I'm going to make it like a little, uh, well, more than a man cave. Uh, but you could go down there and, and I want to make like a, you know, uh, somewhere I could go and stop overnight. And yeah. If my kids come back here or friends. And it was all covered in like trees and weeds and overgrown, all overgrown. You would never have known it was there. And we wow. just found it by, by accident. I'll send you a picture um, on the old uh, messenger when we finish. You wouldn't believe it. It's absolutely bloody gorgeous. And when we inquired it? about it, we thought, yeah, we thought this can't be ours because they didn't mention it in the deeds when we bought the property. Um, anyway, it is. It's ours. So wow. that's going to be one of my little projects. Oi, settle. <sighs> Yeah, I'm going to do it all up and make it a gorgeous place. Isn't that fantastic? That's gorgeous. That's he's not, absolutely he's not humping me, by the way. It's it's just absolutely lovely. That's the only thing. I... What's that? Mm, sorry, I think the dog. I was just about to say the dog isn't trying to hump me. It's, I've got I've got nuts, and he likes the you know these oh, peanuts. He loves these peanuts. And also, he's, he's jumping still, up. He, you know, he's still a baby, isn't he? He's not very old, is he? nine months old he is oh wow he's still a real baby oh yeah how adorable anyway yeah um, so, let's, no, let's, so that's let's, let's... really exciting isn't it my one of my friends um she's absolutely amazing she runs a horse rescue center anyway she's just having made for her and her rescue dog to live in it's absolutely beautiful. There's this guy in the UK and he makes like shepherd's huts on the back of a trailer so you can actually tow them to different places. Brilliant. But this guy is so talented. You would not believe what he's managed to make for her. And that's her home. And, do you know, there's all these amazing people that really are doing it properly, you know, really. Yeah. So you imagine yeah. that's what you're living out of. So her and her dog, and it's beautiful. And she's... She's amazing. She's a brilliant herbalist. She studied the iridology with me. She's incredible with animals. And um, she's so unmaterialistic. But this this guy, what he's managed to make is absolutely stunning. It's incredible. He's made it all from hand. It's it's so talented. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, yeah, I, I know a few people like that. There's a friend of mine, Arthur Rampling, who lives in uh, on Exmoor. He lives in a yurt, OK? Now, his wow. mum and dad have got a gorgeous... I would call it a stately home, a beautiful, it was a massive hotel with land and everything else. But Arthur, he must be 30 now. I've known him since he was 17. He was my apprentice. I taught him falconry. Um, and the nicest lad you would ever want to meet. Uh, but he chooses, because he likes what he likes the lifestyle, to live in a yurt yeah. in the woods. And uh, he does, uh, he's a during the day um, uh, a tree surgeon. So, he, you mm. know, with his chainsaw and all that. So that's what he does for a job. But he is as happy as a pig in the proverbial when he's in his yurt uh, with a little doobie because he smokes a doobie every night and um, uh, listening to the sounds of nature. Uh, he's a lovely guy, Arthur. I love him to bits. Now, there's another fellow that I met uh, when I lived in uh, South Devon, Bob Settle, um, who um, he saw me out on my horse one day. He came over, a beautiful stallion he had, and he came over and said, that is a lovely horse. Uh, we got yapping. I said, whereabouts do you live though? And he said, oh, I live down the track over there. You have to come sometime. I went down this lovely track and he had done the same sort of thing. So it wasn't a year. He'd made a wooden, like a, a was more, far more than a shack. It was a really beautiful wooden building and it was all carved. Oh, wow. God. And he had chickens and he had his vegetable patch and everything else. Now, these sort of people, it's very, very easy to look at somebody like this because Arthur's got long hair and a long beard and earrings and tattoos in fact he was on we went to do game of thrones me and arthur you know i was in it and so was he he was one of the dothraki if you, if you know what they are because he looks exactly like a dothraki this other guy was the same sort of thing long dreadlocked hair tattoos earrings you would look at him and think well i'm going to steer clear of him but you know what he was the nicest person you'd ever want to meet and you should never judge a sausage by its skin should you well, also, I think, you know, in fairness, <laughs> I'd probably be more drawn to someone like that than someone who was sort of more superficial. But then again, exactly. I, shouldn't, I shouldn't judge what I'm, you see, I'm, I've just really judged what I would class as superficial. You know, we, we do judge, unfortunately. But I think it's absolutely yeah, wonderful. Human nature. My husband and I have always sort of said, we would love to live in a yurt. And one of the reasons is because I love fires, 
I'd love to live yeah. in a yurt because I'd just have all the cats and dogs around us. And also I'd have so little housework to do. It would be suit me down to the ground. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, I honestly mean it. I really, really mean it. And I think um, it's always been my dream to have a little community like that. So you've all got your own space, but you've got like-minded people around you on the estate or whatever. And then all the animals roaming free or in their little areas, I think it'd be lovely. With Absolutely. Isn't it, isn't it funny though, how that, what you're describing there, that idyllic lifestyle, that idyllic situation, sorry. He <laughs> likes it, he oh, agrees with me. Here, 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 have a nut. There, good boy, now settle. Yeah, that idyllic lifestyle, surrounded by your animals, um, is where we were, you know, exactly. 200 years ago. That's where we were. And it's it's only this modern lifestyle which basically depresses everybody because we're all stuck in these square boxes, which is what we are talking about the other day, isn't it? Looking at a silly screen, listening to some idiot on the telly frightening the crap out of everybody. No wonder everyone's depressed. And then if they're lucky, they get up, they go and sit on a train, they go for half an hour, go to work, sit in another box for all day and come home and do the same thing tomorrow. Well, that's not life, that's existing. Life is what you just, for me anyway, I know everyone's different, but you know, this modern sort of world that, that I've just described a second ago, that's not been around for that long, has it? You know, people haven't it been hasn't. living like that for centuries. They've been living like that for a, a, a few generations. And no wonder people are depressed because it's not natural. Yeah, I mean, it's lovely. I mean, the modern technology things have got loads of advantages. And, you know, I love being able to phone my mum up and check she's OK whenever I want to and things like that. So, you know, it's lovely to have some of the modern things. But the trouble is, is the whole lifestyle that's been built over the last sort of 100 years or so, is really, really, um, it's very difficult not to get in the comparison, wanting more, keeping up with the Joneses side of yeah. things. And also it's so against natural health because you and I, anyone who spends a lot of time out looking at animals or your friends that are tree surgeons or when you're doing a physical job, you know, you're using your body as you're meant to be using it. And so you've got that amazing sense of satisfaction at the end of the day, mm. when you've been out in the elements, obviously it's lovely to come back and I do like hot water, <laughs> you know, and I do like my heating of some sort, but I'm quite happy for my heating to be a fire. But, mm. you know, that it's the trouble is, it's our modern lifestyle. Of course, there's advantages of, you know, certain healthcare of transportation, being able to see the world, being able to communicate with loved ones. But so much of it is taking us away from physical and emotional and spiritual health, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Well, you that lovely, I can see your love burning in the corner there. Yeah. There's nothing like a fire. It's hypnotic, isn't it? We sit out here, Rebecca will come out in, a, in half an hour or so and join me. We have this fire every night. We have a fire. We sit here, we have a drink. Like the last three nights, there's been the most amazing moon come up, mm. and it's just lovely. And what's so nice about, I think, you know, we've got all these amazing sounds of animals here, wildlife and whatnot, is that we're not being bombarded with negativity. Even like TV commercials, you probably we've talked about this. I think the TV commercials are pushing not just what they're selling, but they're pushing this modern attitude and this narrative constantly cramming it down your throat all the time and um i mean i know because i point it out all the time. i mean i shout at the telly because it's so it's forcing me to try and think how people want me to think and i just yeah. don't want to whereas when we're sitting here we're talking we have our friends over we bring the guitars out nothing is forced it's all natural and it's just lovely and uh, far better than sitting there watching the bloody telly it really is. It is. It's we're really lucky. And I think also it's sort of opening that up to as many people as possible as well. So, um, you know, in terms of people sharing resources as well. I mean, we've got really lovely couple that live near us and they own a great big estate and it's absolutely beautiful. And they've got a deer park and they've got loads of fields and they've got loads of woods. But they're so generous. So they like let me rent one of the fields for my horses. And it's beautiful because I walk them up there. It's a 10, 15 minute walk up there. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's real escapism. And we all go up there and sort of sit in there and the dogs love it. And there's loads of wildlife up there. But that's a really beautiful. good example of people that have got a lot themselves, but they're so generous in letting other people have access to it. 
and that's really lovely that's as me. well letting him pause because i do think nature it's not meant to be owned yeah quite I've, i agree we're only here as sort of temporary custodians aren't mm -hmm. we and that, that's what people have i've always struggled with that actually this sort of idea of owning land you know when you get big landowners and they own thousands of acres of land and yeah. you have to go and ask for permission to walk or ride your horse over there or in my case fly my falcons i've always thought how can you possibly own loads of land and because nobody owns it yeah we all we all kind of own it we all live on it we're all custodians but nobody actually owns it and i remember this one guy called john regan who's a falcon a big fella and we were out years and years ago. God, must be 30 years ago now. We were on a moor. Oi, Bob, settle. We're on a grouse moor. And uh, we, must have, we must have strayed over onto a bit that we weren't supposed to be on. Anyway, the fella came over, the landover, owner, plain L. What are you doing on my land? Get off my land. You haven't got permission to be on here. So this bit of an argument start, started. And John said, well, how come you own the land? Where did you get it from? And he said, well, I inherited it. Now, bear in mind, this guy, John Regan, right, was a bouncer for Manchester City, uh, Manchester United Football Club. He was seven foot. He's huge, big fella. Where did you get the land from? Well, I inherited it from my father. Well, where did he get it from? Well, he got it from his father. And he went right back. He said, well, where did he get it from? He said he fought for it. So John says, all right, take your coat off. I'll fight you for it. <laughs> <laughs> he just squashed him like a tomato. This fella got in his Land Rover and buggered off, but... Doesn't, don't you think that is the whole idea of one person owning thousands of acres and saying to somebody else, you're not allowed to walk on it, well, is the, the most bizarre thing. ridiculous. You know, the animals know it's ridiculous. You know, they you go of out they the thing there and, and the wild boar and the deer and the squirrels and the ants and the birds and everything. It's just we're sort of custodians on it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just an interesting concept. And I'm intrigued to see how all this changes. You know, if the new financial changes, whatever they end up looking like, come in. Yeah. It's just going to be really fascinating to see. I mean, I'm, I am quite hopeful that people, you'll see a very different side of most people when they haven't got money worries. Yeah. Absolutely. I know all the all the crime that takes place. You know, why do people go burgle houses? Yeah. Why do people sell drugs? Why do people fight and argue? It's all because they're worried about money. They're all just trying to make money. And of course, people get very, very territorial. I, f I mean, maybe I shouldn't go into it, but since we've moved here to Spain, and obviously we have a reputation for horses and so a few people have contacted us about helping people sell sell horses because it, Rebecca's the same, I'm the same. We know lots of people. Now, other people have said, oh, you can't get involved in that. that that's, that's, just, that's what I do for a living. Well, we're not gonna get involved in it at all. But it's really weird how people straight away are very protective over what's theirs because they yeah. feel as though someone else might be a threat. And, and, and that's where all of the, there's a saying, isn't there? Money is the root of all evils. You've yeah. probably heard that. And it is so true. Because all of these, all this criminal activity and all this sort of like, you know, crime and everything, it all stems down to the fact that people need to survive and want to get things. They want money. They want stuff. They want greed. And in actual fact, if you were to take all of that out of the equation, the need for this, that and the other, there wouldn't be crime. There wouldn't be murders and stabbings and jealousy in it because everyone would have enough. Do you know what I mean? I it's so it bloody is. obvious. I think it's really important because everyone's got a different level that they aspire to with money and a different lifestyle and everything. Yeah. You know, you and I are sitting there drinking our wine and beer now, which is a luxury. Um, but I think it, what the thing is, is when you take that fear out of it, because when you you are genuinely worried about where the next paycheck is coming from, whether you're yep. going to be able to support your family, whether you're going to be able to pay the boiler and go on, you're in a constant state of stress. And yeah, absolutely. And when you're in a constant state of stress, you don't make the best decisions and it's really difficult to be happy. So I do really, I mean, I completely believe there's enough resources to go around, food, water, energy, money. And I yeah. completely believe that we don't, it's not we're all going to be driving around in, Aston Martins or things like that. I mean, most a lot of us don't aspire for that anyway. But mm. just to have that stress 
a survival. Look at the food side of things. I mean, I work with a lot of people on health and nutrition for themselves and for their animals. And the trouble is so many people, you know, perceive they can't afford to eat healthily, which is a reality for a lot of people. And, and that yep. has a knock on effect about every other aspect of their life because then they're living in suboptimal health and um, the stresses that go with that. So I think, you know, sorting out their financial side of things and the division of wealth and taking that focus off people, I think immediately you'd see the human race transform into a lot nicer. I, I absolutely agree. Do you remember what during the banking crisis, what was it, 2008? Yeah. Do you remember when all the banks went? belly up and they bailed all the banks out well i remember saying at the time and so this goes back so we're, we're 12 13 years ago so it just goes to show how long i've been thinking a bit like we're thinking now mm -hmm. when they bailed the banks out who bailed the banks out well we had to bail the banks out. Yeah. so why didn't they give the money to the people mm. say to everybody right i'm going to give everybody 100 grand each you all owe 100 grand you can do what you like you can pay off your mortgage you can go out on holiday, you can have a, because the money is going to end up going in the system anyway. Who, where, whatever happens, if you give everybody a hundred grand, it's going to go into the system because they're going to buy stuff. Yeah. And so everybody will benefit. So why bypass the people and give it to the banks when they're the ones who made a balls up of the whole thing in the first place by trying to enslave us by lending money that didn't exist and making us pay interest on it? Do you it, see what I mean? Yeah, completely. It's crazy. It's like, it's... you know, when you're growing up and you do something wrong, you don't reward your child for doing it because they're no. never going to learn a lesson. And this is a bit what I feel about the disclosure of whatever is or isn't going to come out. It's like, you know, at, at the moment, you need to have that tough love and you've mm -hmm. got to do that because if you keep just brushing everything over like that, do you know, why the hell reward the system that's been completely incompetent in the first place? Exactly. Like, if you just sat everyone, well, not literally sat everyone, but if you do explain to everyone and said, look, this is it, you're getting this payoff, you're, an, you're a grown up, we're trusting you to use it in the way that you choose, but you take responsibility for how you choose to use it. Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of people would make good decisions. I know there's always this argument that people say that most people who win the lottery use it, lose it and it ruins their lives. But that's because there's no guidance given around it. And most people at the end of the day, when you do actually say a few home truths like that, a lot of people will respect that and use it. And, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to be accountable for ourselves. And, and you know what, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with regard to the government, okay? Now, let's say the government at the moment who are being obviously exposed by Dominic Cummings and everybody yeah. else, right? Now, however they try and spin that and wiggle out of it, Wine if you are, uh, what's your husband's name? Mark. Hello, Wineberry. Oh, hi, how are you? I'm all right, mate. I'll have a beer if you're going. <laughs> oh, I've got some, actually. It's just got some. Yeah. Um... Yeah, no, um, da, 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 da. yeah, the uh, the government, okay, who now have made a complete balls up of the whole situation in the last mm. year, okay? Now, however they try and wriggle out of it and spin it and say, oh, we didn't know and it's unprecedented times and la, 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 la. If you're the prime minister and if you're running the country, you are the commander in chief and therefore it is up to you to take responsibility for everything that's happened because you are the one making decisions. Now, there were thousands of us saying, let's not lock down the country let's keep the economy going let's protect the old people let the rest of us get back to work so there's no use a year later saying oh well we didn't know at the time uh, and sorry about that but now we're, we're we're a year further on we're a year wiser and we'll just forget that we made a big mistake no i'm sorry i'm sorry you should suffer the consequences the same as in my normal job going to shows doing uh, falconry with the horseback I have to be insured up to the eyeballs. Yeah. Because if one of my horses breaks free and tramples a load of kids or people at a show, I would be up in court. I'd probably go to prison for manslaughter or something, and I would be sued, you know, to, within yeah. an inch of my life. So why, if that's the case for me, should it not be the same for China or any other country for that matter, who have allowed a virus to go wreak havoc in their country bearing in mind they knew they had it and they were letting flights come in and out 
bearing in mind Boris Johnson is letting flights come in and out and everything. Those people should be paying compensation to you and to me and to every other person who's worked our balls up all our lives and have now found our businesses ruined because of incompetent decisions by people who we pay for. They should be giving us money. They should be any of the crap that we've had to put up with through their incompetence. They should pick up the tab because it wasn't our fault. It was their fault. And I want people to feel I would Christ tell you what, if I had a soapbox, I'd love to meet Boris Johnson. And I'll tell you something, Catherine, I'm not an educated person. I'm just a normal person who works hard and I do my level best. But I would feel completely and utterly confident if I was on a one to one interview with any of these leaders, whether it's Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, any of them, because I could give them a few home truths. I wouldn't be intimidated by them because they've wronged every single one of us. Look what they've done to our grandparents. Look at what they're doing now to our children. All the businesses, all the stress, all the people who've committed suicide. And it's absolutely outrageous. And I'm spewing angry about it. I would love to have a one-to-one -one conversation with Boris Johnson. The only problem, problem is I would find it difficult not to put my fist through the back of his face. That's how angry I am. I'm furious about it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry about I'm Sorry not very good. I haven't well. got a particularly good punch on me, but I'm I'm quite good with my mouth. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> but no, I think the thing is, you've got to take responsibility in this life for it. And the thing, if you put yourself up for those positions, you don't need to know everything yourself, but you need to be very good at building the right team around you. And we all know it's blatantly obvious that the team they've built around them has been nothing based on confidence, competence. It's been based on corruption and who's black who, and who's doing that. Now, throughout this whole thing, the one thing, if you'd have asked me two or three years ago, you know, as a parent, one of the things you get concerned about when you get to have teenagers is online security, for example. Luckily, our internet never worked well enough for them to do much online. But in an all seriousness. Now, since I've been doing the uh, interviews with people and things, I've realized if we say one word, they can ban the video straight away. They can pick it up. You're telling me they can't find pedophiles or people that are grooming people online. So we know that's a lie. We yeah. know that they've been tracking us and influencing people's opinions, not based on facts for years. And they've proven that time and time again. We know they're completely transparent. We know that they're employing psychologists to coerce people into making particular decisions. Just so to think our healthcare service that has all has been a beacon to the world, you know, the National Health Service is something that many, many countries look up to. And we are very lucky because if we do get run over by a bus, we will be taken in and given free medical care, which is, you know, not the case in many places in the world. So we have got up, but to think that this corruption goes on and, and that it's so exposed mm -hmm. and yet still people aren't realizing the significance of it and understanding how that ramification affects every aspect of their lives is just gobsmacking to me because at the end of the day, trust and character, as we'd say in the good old British things, you know, if you haven't got integrity, then you've got nothing. Mm -hmm. absolutely right i i absolutely agree with you i don't know the thing is catherine you can get yourself in a right state and and i get very passionate about it you must have seen that video of that lad from yorkshire a kind of thick set lad who was in the gym and yes, he had a right gym, rant yeah. do you know what i listened to that lad i don't know who he is i don't know him i'd like to talk to him but i do know one thing that his outburst really rallied me up it yeah. was a bit like, uh, you know, when um, Gladiator, when they're rallying all the yeah. people. to, And I thought, he's absolutely right, this lad. And a lot of the people who, because I shared that video, a lot of people have mm -hmm. said, oh, what an idiot. He needs to do that. He needs to do that. But I thought, no, he's he's right to be angry. He's absolutely right to be angry and, and fired up. because uh, we all need to be like that. And when he talked about uh, the police need to turn around, stand with your people, get down to Westminster, drag the bastards out of the... He's absolutely right. I agree with him 100%. And I, I tell you what, I got quite fired up listening to that speech. Mm. I thought, good on you. Good. Where, where the hell's the rest of them? Where are the rest of these fellas? Everything. You know, most people don't make changes in their life 
until it hits them at a really emotional, personal level. And with him, you could see it was completely genuine passion and emotion because the frustration that he could see what was going on yeah and he was going to do something about it and at the end of the day everyone might have different ways of expressing themselves but if 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 this current situation isn't stirring a strong emotion in you as a person i think you need to seriously look at yourself you know i think i've said that so many times to people I absolutely agree. When when people are kind of um, laughing about certain comments that I've made, you know, sometimes I I, I leave very 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 easy going and upbeat comments because I'm trying to be upbeat. But then just occasionally something rattles me cage and I feel the need to kind of unleash a bit. And uh, some people don't understand why I'm in an upset. They can't understand what's. I think hang on a minute. Are we living in the same world? So you're telling me for the last year. All the things that we know about businesses and not being able to travel and not being able to give your mum a cuddle and see your children and go and see, and it doesn't affect you, you know, and you don't, you're not angry about it. I think, well, what the hell's wrong with you? Because if you're not angry about that, you're not living in the same world that I'm living in because I'm bloody furious. I agree. My One of my really lovely friends today, she left a message for me. I haven't got back to yet. And someone she knows, um, this lady has just become a grandmother about a year ago. And so because of the pandemic, her, her child and her grandchild live abroad. So she hasn't been able to see them. So this lady had the vaccination because she believed that was the only way she was going to be allowed to travel and see the grandchild yeah. she's never met. Yeah. And she's died after the vaccination. Gosh. So she's that never does. met her grandchild and she had it for that. Now, of course, everyone's going to say, well, you've got to prove it, you've got to do it. Well, yeah, but this is a reality and people are making decisions for these reasons. And she was desperate to see her grandchild. That is an absolute tragedy. And I don't know the person, but my friend does. But to me, it doesn't matter that I don't know this person. Those are the type of people that we're fighting for, that are genuinely mm. doing things with the best of their knowledge to do what they think is right and it's having disastrous effects on them. Now, I understand that people die. I understand that everything in life is a risk, but these people have been deliberately lied to. Yeah, and absolutely. And that, that, I said that today. It's to, for, to me, one of the biggest things that really rattles me is this informed consent because yeah. people who've been going for the job, they don't know. They no. don't know that, that they haven't had someone sit down to them and say, now, do you understand that this is an experiment that we're doing and you are actually part of the experiment? Do you understand that? Do you know? Yeah. No one's had that read to them and they should have done. Now, I'll tell you something, Catherine. I know personally, me, actually me, I know six people who've died after having yeah. the second vaccine. One guy who I knew very well, who's a really nice chap, a lovely man, actually, in his 60s, he was not not very old, he had his uh, second jab on the Monday, the following day, dead. Yeah. Now, um, and, and I mean, he was a healthy, healthy bloke, a uh, very intelligent, well-read, well-traveled man, no, uh, no health issues. And the bloody things killed him. Now, I know it's killed him, and I know six, uh, six in total, so a couple in America and four in Britain. Now, I was told yesterday, whether this is right or not, that uh, a 30-odd-year-old model in England had her second vaccine and died. Is that right? Have you heard this in the I newspaper? I haven't heard that, but but to be honest, I probably wouldn't because I haven't, you know, really, I've just skimmed the news and concentrated on Dominic Cowmings. But it, yeah, yeah. it is horrendous. And this is the thing I've said, is, is a lot of people know this. I mean, I, I personally know one person, um, but... I've got loads of friends that personally know, you know, people, but none of them knew anyone who died of COVID. But the other exactly thing is, the same. get back to the human experiment side of things. Now, I think if someone is a human, I completely disagree with experimenting on animals. I don't think you'll be surprised by that. I completely disagree about that. And if someone is the type of human that is going to put themselves up for a medical experiment, I've got the utmost admiration for you. But that is a choice, as you said, that is an informed consent and you would hope that they would be, have everything explained to them and that they would be in a sound state of mind to make that decision. And I'm sure people make it for all sorts of decisions, whether it's 
financial, whether it's moral or whatever. And if they're making that decision, I applaud you because quite frankly, I'd far rather they tested on informed consent humans than animals. Yeah. But I agree yeah. with you that I don't know anyone that's had the vaccine that has had that conversation. I know every single person I know who's had the, the vaccination has been told it's safe by their doctors and they yeah, that's were right. advised it's in their best interest to have it. And I heard today a brilliant interview by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and um, Michael Eden, you know, the ex Pfizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. And the thing is, what people don't realize, poor Michael Eden is, is probably going to have to leave the UK because of now he's put himself in such a vulnerable position. But he's completely pro-vax. He's, he's actually yeah, yeah. pro the pharmaceutical industry. So he's not even on, say, where I sit on a lot of things like this. But his arguments are so compelling mm -hmm. about why only very few people, very vulnerable people. And he said, you know, if you're in one of the most vulnerable age groups where you are at quite a high risk, if you get it, if you should be sitting down with your doctor and having the pros and cons of it explained. And if you decide to have it, that's, you know, that's completely your decision. But he said for anyone that's not in the highest of the highest risk categories to have it, and he mm. goes through all the reasons, and this is someone that's pro that, pro, yeah, yeah. pro not that it I've is. I've listened to him many times. I know exactly who you're talking about. And, and he speaks and this out is of a lot of sense. This stupid conspiracy theorist is stupid this. It's just like, do you know, you can chuck stones as much as you like, but you, we all know, and, and the people that call us all conspiracy theorists, they know it deep down in their heart, even though they wouldn't have. And I've got someone like you've got on your Facebook page. Mine's not on my Facebook page. It's on my YouTube videos. It's hysterical. Never don't know who the person is at all. But they know deep in their soul that that they haven't done the research. That yeah, they exactly. haven't done it. So I'm exactly. really, really willing for someone to come and prove me wrong on this. I would absolutely love it if what we think mm. about this is wrong. Yeah, me too. But that's what I said the other day when we did our, our interview with Charlie. If I woke up tomorrow and it was all, you know, suddenly I had this like real awakening that all my fears and anxieties and worries were unfounded. Do you know what? I'd be the happiest person in the yeah. world. I think, well, thank goodness for that. But I know, I know that that's not going to happen because what I know and what you know and what we can see is real and it's terrifying it's worse than the opposite uh you know it, it listen as i said to you before the worst that can happen right now because i've come out like you have and been a very vocal is that people are going to think i'm an idiot and they're not going to like me yeah people think i'm an idiot and lots of people don't like me already i couldn't <laughs> care less all the people that i want to like me in this world already do and that's all that matters so I've got absolutely nothing to gain. I don't make any money from this. I'm not doing this because it's financial, nothing like that. I'm doing it because I feel as though I've got to speak out. I've got exactly. to say something. That's the only thing that's, that make, motivates me. In fact, Rebecca says to me all the time, why are you doing this, Jonathan? You know, you're not making money on it. Well, you could be out. I said, Rebecca, don't you understand? For me, I can't sit quietly and let people go and do this like lambs to the slaughter. I've got to say something. And I wonder if, you know, five, ten years from now, will we look back on these videos and will people who are listening to us now think, bloody hell, well, they were right, how did they know? Or will they think, well, look at those idiots, weren't they stupid? Exactly, and either way, because the thing is, anyone, it is truly informed choice to listen to us. Yeah. So you don't need to go on our Facebook posts, you don't need to listen to our videos, so those are the only two choices. If you are consciously clicking on to do that, that is informed choice. And you don't yeah. need to agree with us. But equally, you know, if, if you're the type of person, I find it hysterical. I absolutely don't need everyone to agree with me at all. But if you're going to be the type of person that's deliberately looking to pick holes in something, come up with something constructive, come up with something yeah. educational, come up with something positive, um, all of those things are very welcome, but you know, it's like you don't go into someone's house and start criticizing everything. Um, mm. You know, that is the ultimate in full choice. And do you know what? If I would never forgive myself if I didn't say something, you know, I've got lots of my children's friends now that are being offered the vaccine. 
and I'm not their parent and it's not you know that of course they have the choice but mm. as a parent if someone knew something was a danger to my children and I didn't know and they didn't tell yeah. me and yeah. something happened I think I'd find it very hard to forgive them now, yeah. if they told me and my children chose to ignore it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But don't keep uh, that information to yourself because that's how, as a species, we all learn. It's how animals learn. It's how we learn. And then you live yeah, and die I by agree. those decisions. I likened it to, you know, if I knew your house was on fire, I'd mm. tell you. Exactly. And if, uh, you know, if I didn't tell you and it burnt to the gr a ground, then I would feel guilty forever that I never said anything. And then it's only the same situation as that. But I'll tell you one thing. I wonder if you've had this, Catherine. There are certain people that I know and love, members of my family, who I just know that will not listen to a word I say. They, mm. um, because, A, they're not got the brain capacity because they're just not that deep thinking. And um, they've already too far down the, the whole, the, the whole ne official narrative. So I've kind of, they've said, oh, I've had my first vaccine. One <laughs> family member in particular, I've had my first vaccine. I'm having another one in a few weeks' time. Now, I know that I am banging my head against the wall trying to explain it to him. I might as well, I might as well speak to him in Japanese because he's never going to get it. And yeah. so therefore, I've just said to him, oh, well, I hope it all works out. Because I haven't got the energy to have that battle because he won't believe me and he won't no, they understand won't. it. People won't listen to their family. You, you can guarantee your siblings won't listen to you and nine times out of 10, your husband or wife won't listen to you. So, you know, as you say, there's certain battles that they can't because they've got that image of us. I've got exactly the same with my sisters. They think I'm completely yeah. nuts, completely nuts. Yeah. We're on completely different spectrums. And that's absolutely fine because quite honestly, I think they're completely nuts. And I yeah. have got, I feel... Do I, I feel sad because you know thing, but equally, I think the best thing you can do to them is send them love, and exactly, and exactly. Pray That's right. that everything will be okay for them because none of us want our family members to be the scapegoats. And the last thing I want is for anything to happen to any of the people that I love. Yeah. Um, so with them, I would just you know send them love, pray, accept. I mean, they've always thought I was a nutter anyway. So again, yeah, yeah. nothing's changed with that. Yeah, and I'm yeah, quite happy yeah. being a nutter. <laughs> you know, I don't mind. I'm quite. Well, happy I'm just. I just worry that you know, in future, uh, in a year's time, if if this person does die through the vaccine or through what the vaccine is going to bring on later, which we all know about, you know about it. I know. Yeah. About it, how am I going to think? How am I going to? But there again, if I'd have said something, that wouldn't have stopped. It wouldn't have made any difference anyway. So, you you kind of a bit knackered, wh whichever way you go with certain people. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not allowed to send my one. family members anything. You know, I, I'm completely banned from because I don't expect them to listen to me. I I completely yeah, yeah. get why they wouldn't listen to me. I'm I I get that. But when I'm sending a video by, you know, Dolores Cahill or one of the brilliant doctors or something like that, I'm surprised they wouldn't listen to that. Mm, exactly. Equally, I've had the same thing with my sister. I think I, I don't stop, even though I get really told off for doing it. And they've told me, do not you dare send me another one. I still keep sending them because I think that's all I can do. I'm not going to say mm. it myself because they wouldn't mm. listen to me. But I'll send the other stuff and then that is just then in the lap of the gods and they can choose to listen to it. Or That's not. right. If they've got it on their phone and they click it, then they've made the choice to click it or not. So I yeah. agree. I've done the exact same with my mum. But tell you what's happened. I spoke to my mum last week and she said, actually, Chrissy, my youngest brother, who I love to bits, I love all my brothers, um, he is now starting to question. Now, uh, Six months ago, I was the biggest tosser on the planet and mm. probably still am in his eyes. But at least now he is thinking, hmm, this doesn't make sense anymore. And mm. he's starting to question. So if Chrissy is starting to question, then that is saying something because he is, you know, if I say something's black, he'll say it's white and vice mm. versa. So who I'm knows? I'm like your siblings. And this is why I worry about the teenagers because, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know anyone who listened to their parents when they're a teenager. That's part of life, isn't it? It's part of the natural way 
that were designed so that parents can cope with their children leaving home and children can cope with their parents leaving home. You go through that angst. So I get that. I completely get that. And I look back, you know, a lot of, you know, teenagers will deliberately do the opposite of what their parents yeah, yeah. say, because that is how you're meant to be as a teenager. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's where you just really hope that they've got some good, objective people in their lives that that can give them sound advice. Um, mm. And, you know, at the end of the day, all we can do is our best. And we don't need anyone to listen to us. But if you know something, as you say, if the house is on fire, the thing is, all we can do is do the best we can with the best of knowledge every day. I'm spending all my time reading more information. I'm just looking for my brilliant new book. I'm um, I'm really excited. I don't know if you've read this book. It's absolutely brilliant. No. Good and Health. Um, mm. And it's by Andreas um, Klacker. And he does all the MMS um, uh, CDS, which is basically a really fantastic oxygenating natural substance. But I'm sort of spending all my time educating and sort of saying, well, the best I can do is get as many tools in my toolkit. And then if anyone asks for them, I'm very happy to share them. And equally, yeah. I've got a lot of other people that know a lot more about other things than I do. And so you think, right, I'll keep, you know, I know who to ask. If I don't know, I know someone that does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, but I think you get, you know, you, you've got to protect it. You look at any wild animal will protect their young. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, they will. Yeah. Well, I, I think that what you're doing, I mean, you're, you've gone into this much bigger than me. I know you've just launched a new website, haven't you? Yeah, I put that on there because I'm just so sick to death of the censorship. I on on principle, I don't want to keep supporting. Now, at the moment, YouTube's much easier for everyone to use. You know, everyone's used to using it. You can find stuff, but I've myself and so many other friends. You know, the censorship it's so corrupt um, yeah. on every level. They're now also I don't know what it's like with this, but they're now everyone who puts videos up on YouTube, they're shoving ads all over it without the owner's permission and without them earning any money from it. Um, mm. And everything about it's so corrupt. So I launched a new website because I just want to try and move away from these corrupt pr platforms. It's not ready yet, but you know, if I get kicked off again, I won't be coming back again. And at least you can tell people. So I'm very much mm. put my money where my mouth is, and I don't want to keep supporting the Amazons, the YouTubes, the. Isn't, isn't it funny though how they kind of suckered us into it? Because remember when all this started, you know, the YouTubes and everything, all these Facebooks. And I remember thinking at the time, this is all free. How come it's all free? What's why? Why? Well, they were actually they were they were getting us all like in the net, weren't they? Yeah. You know, they were kind of suckering us all in, and so once they've got everybody, they go right now we've got you. And that's what they've done because people have become addicted to it all. I mean, yeah. I'm afraid to say I'm probably one of it. I, I've buggered my phone a couple of days ago. It's going to be hopefully fixed tomorrow. So I've been in without my phone now for 48 hours. But honestly, it's like I've got a leg missing. Yes, I know. It is quite worrying. We never thought at our age. I mean, again, you expect the youngsters say that, but it is quite worrying. You know, I keep getting the notifications about you've exceeded your screen time and things. But... I think it's changing. I do think it's changing, Jonathan. I mean, look at what we've seen over the last few weeks. We've seen the Dominic Cummings. We've seen the royal family. We've seen yeah. Biden coming out with things about China. We've seen Anthony Fauci getting an absolute blasting. Yeah, publicly. yeah. We're seeing a lot more data coming out. I mean, just before I came on with you, so I always quickly have a look at the headlines. And on the BBC, there's now a graph of which age groups are at risk of the blood clots from the Oxford AstraZeneca. Now, that's really good. They're starting to put that out there. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we are definitely moving in the right direction. No, I, I agree. I really do agree. And uh, I'm excited because, you know, um, we think that six months, oh, that seems a long time, but it actually is not. Six months yeah. goes like that. And you think I'm far we've travelled, uh, you know, since, say, Christmas, mm. since when we were all thinking, oh, Trump's going to get back in in uh, January. You know, I was convinced that they were going to arrest everybody and it'll all be exposed. And, and as we know, it didn't happen. No. But I was that's where I was at Christmas. You know, I was absolutely on that page. Um, and um, I mean, that's now what we're in. Well, we're in June next week, aren't we? We are. And, and you know, I think I'm the first to admit I was completely wrong. I really wanted I, I've. 
been so pissed off with this like you've got to go slow you've got to wait for people to wake up i've been no no i'm not bothered about them just wait them up rip the plaster off but now as time goes on because i'm the most impatient person ever my friends call me hurry up so i want everything immediately but i can see why they're doing it because i don't me too the consciousness is high enough i think we're still so ingrained as uh, mm -hmm. in our old way of doing things that we just wouldn't make the changes it would be a big exposure for a bit and then everyone would go back to living as normal i agree i i absolutely agree and i also think that um for people to understand how massive this is sadly they have to suffer a bit yeah otherwise they won't remember it you know, it's funny, isn't it? They, they use that uh, during the Second World War, lest we forget Yeah. That, that, as well. Unfortunately, we have forgotten. We We've have forgotten. forgotten. And, uh, you know, after this situation, when we get out the other end, which I hope and pray we will, we will then have to relearn lest we forget because we can never let this happen again. This, yeah. this evil, we can never let it take hold like it has ever again. Yeah. He's hungry. Anyway, Eric. Okay, the, yeah, it's brilliant. Bob needs feeding. And he does. Uh, how long do you get your kitten? Because I'm so excited about you're getting a kitten. Uh, well, uh, Jorge came over today, showed me a photograph of the kittens. I, I didn't even know he had kittens, but he said, well, we've got five and we've, we want you to have one. So, and it's like Diddy. So it's probably going to be another couple of weeks, probably next yeah. time we talk. You want, um, yeah, make sure it's at least eight weeks old. Don't get it before then. So, oh, okay. Yeah, you right. don't want to. It's really, really bad for cats to have them taken away too early from their mums. Okay, right. Well, yeah. I remember that. I, remember, I mean, we want a little barn cat because we've obviously got, you know, all our animals. So there are oh. mice and stuff about. Uh, but the thing is, I don't want it catching birds. I, we've got some beautiful, gorgeous birds here. Some I don't even know what they are. And I know, you know, birds really well, but some of them I don't recognise. And uh, that's the one thing about cats. I don't mind them catching rats and mice, but I don't like digging the little birds. I know. Well, I just rescued, just before we came on, Pumpkin, one of my big black cats. He'd caught a mouse, but it was alive and well. So I had to, I'm such a good mouse catcher now because I can go and get them. <laughs> I run and release them in the neighbor's garden <laughs> where they're safe. Hey, um, just before we go, just before we go, now, hopefully, let me just grab the dongle. So oh, back, stay there, Bob. Bob's down there. Uh, let me just see, because I've, I've made an owl box. Have you got the dongle there? Can I borrow it just a sec? Sure, is that right? Okay. I just, just literally a sec. I've got to show Catherine this. Okay, so we got, we got barn owls. That's our Astorian barn over there, you see it? It's gorgeous. Okay. Yeah, it is gorgeous. And we've had owls going in there because uh, I found the droppings and the, and the pellets, but I thought, I'd love to have an owl box right on the apex of that roof there. So I decided to make a cool one. Now look at this for an owl box. I only finished it today. So I'm going to put it up tomorrow. So I've painted, wow. can you see? I've painted a little moon, little moon. That's where the owl goes in. There's a perch for it to land on. And look at the roof. I've done a really cool roof on it. Wow. That was, how cool is that, eh? That's so really that's cool. That's owl you... box, which will be... What do you put in there with an the box? Do you put yeah. like bedding in there or anything? Would you leave them to yeah. fill it up? No, they, they don't sort of make an actual nest. So all I'm going to do is chuck a few shavings in there. Yeah. Because uh, they make they make a, what's called a scrape. Yeah. Um, but of course, it weighs a blooming ton. It was a wardrobe. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I made I made two things. I made toilet seat, which you might have seen on my video. I made a lovely toilet, wooden toilet. Right. And uh and an owl box. So that's gonna go up there tomorrow, which is gonna I hope the roof gonna... doesn't collapse. I hope the roof is strong. We've got loads of owls around here. Um and my neighbor's son's really good, so I've got to identify them all because the noise of the owls at night is just spectacular. But yeah. the, um that's I enjoy them because I'm not a mouse. If I was a mouse, I wouldn't be so happy. <laughs> you just reminded me of one last thing before we, before we go. I've got to quickly tell you this. In fact, we'll have Bob in the background. Ugh, yeah, so um, years ago, I was doing a show in Birmingham, okay, uh, with me falcons and me horses. And this bloke with a real strong, brummy accent came over and he went, there's loads of owls where we live. I said, what? What? 
there's loads of owls where we live in his in his brummy accent. And I said, what kind of owls? And he said, rabbit owls. <laughs> <laughs> it, it I know. was his brummy, <laughs> brummy accent that he was saying holes. <laughs> oh, that's really anyway. Yeah. I suppose oh, we should wrap up. Lovely to speak. Bob yeah. is absolutely beautiful. He's so Isn't handsome. He, he really is. Bob. No, no, Bobby. Oh, oh he says, come on, Dad, I'm bored now. Come play. Oh, no. Speak to you in a few weeks, then. Right, well, lovely to chat. Well, let, yes. let's chat in a couple of weeks. And Will I'm sending do. love to everybody. And Bye. All the best.